I'm really happy to be here to talk about it. Uh, I always claim that uh, I'm a little bit nervous, uh, but you should be that, uh, to be a little bit on, on edge, on toe for, to give a presentation. But today, I've actually learned that it's not nervousness, it's excitement, <laughs> right? Uh, I'll talk a little bit more later about the first, the S word at the, uh, the first one in, in the title, uh, the non-mentionable word, word here, um, which is very uh, close to my heart. Uh, so I'll, I'll explain why that is important also for us. Uh, direct solar power. The, the meaning of that is that anything that we can do directly during daytime with solar power, which is the most efficient way so you don't have to store energy in batteries and stuff like that. We are, water pump, we are pumping water doing that. We are now using more and more uh, fridges on direct solar power. This was looking into oxygen provision, and I've just started uh, starting up a project also on air conditioning using direct solar power. So uh, that's also close to heart. Uh, but the oxygen, uh, the medical oxygen, it's uh, said to be the world's most, uh, most used drug. Uh, and it's used for, for many different conditions. Uh, and in the developed world, it's always available through a hole in the wall in the hospitals, as you know. Nothing strange. Uh, in the uh, low and medium income countries uh, or the world, uh, it's very often not available at all, uh, especially in places like, like rural Africa. Uh, in, a, in a campaign on, on oxygen access uh, now, it's been pointed out that uh, one of the main uh, problems with this is that a lot of children die of severe pneumonia many of which cases could be actually helped with oxygen access. And uh, UNICEF and World uh, Health Organization estimate that around a million children die of pneumonia every year, a lot of that preventable. So in a way, it's a big failure for medicine access in the world that we are dealing with here. Uh, oops. In MSF, we do have oxygen available in projects, at least in hospitals and in emergency interventions. Uh, not necessarily in our outreach health centers or in the cars where we transport uh, severely ill patients. Uh, the primary way we supply it is through the small oxygen concentrators that you all who have been to a field project know about. Original developed for uh, home use in the developed world, uh, but now very, very good to supply oxygen also uh, in field projects. Uh, it's being in, uh, used in uh, increasing, uh, the, the use has increased exponentially over the last years. And you see ordered at AP APU means what's ordered annually through Amsterdam procurement unit. So this is for one of the five sections in, in uh, MSF. Uh, even that is increasing expo exponentially, and so is the cumulative availability of concentrators in the field. So based on that, we estimated that maybe there's around 3,000 of these concentrators running uh, across the movement. Uh, the way we run them today, they require constant electricity. That's the way they work which is no problem in the, in the developed world. In, uh, in, in the places we are, uh, it may be a problem. Uh, but uh, for us, we normally supply them with, with electricity from uh, diesel generators. Uh, most of the time, uh, they are run on, on generator power because the power grids uh, where we are are non-existent or, uh, or dysfunctional often. Uh, the running cost is relatively high, uh, as you can see here. Uh, a concentrator only costs about 1,000 euros to buy, uh, but it can cost up to 3,000 euros per year to run it, only in diesel cost, only in fuel cost. Still, this is not a big problem for, for MSF, of course, uh, but I do think we should 
talk a little bit more, and maybe after yesterday's session on, on uh, global warming, uh, we can talk a little bit more about this issue also. But even more important, I think it is that we talk about what we leave behind when we close projects. Uh, what's the possibility to keep running uh, anything afterwards? Uh, 3,000 euros per year is probably the total budget for a small rural hospital in, in somewhere in Africa, or at least close to it. So it's not doable. So this is really the sustainability issues I want to talk about. The last one being social and economical sustainability, the first one being environmental. And I do think we should tackle that better than we do. So, uh, the background for the SOX project uh, and the objective you can see there, uh, to find a solution for medical oxygen generation using direct solar power during daytime, and then store the oxygen as gas somehow for nighttime use, which would be uh, an efficient way of doing it. The background for it is that I was uh, tech log uh, logistician in a small um, rural hospital project in DRC in Congo in 2016. Uh, it was my first mission. Uh, and having been there trying to figure out how this was working, uh, for two months, um, the uh, section uh, in, in Amsterdam decided that uh, it's time to close down the project. Uh, and that was, of course, a, a bit of a shock to us, being there and knowing all the needs around. Um, but luckily, there was, there was a very good MOH, uh, Ministry of Health uh, Hospital Director, uh, who was willing to try and continue operations. Uh, but beside the medicine that we were going to donate, uh, he did need a little bit of electricity to be able to run lights, uh, some cold chain facilities, and we pinpointed oxygen supply as, as very, very important here. There's no way of getting that otherwise. It's extremely remote. Uh, so I managed to convince the headquarters in, in uh, well, through the project, the mission, and then the headquarters in Amsterdam that we install a small solar power system. Uh, and we managed to do that in the four months we were still in the project and, and had it up running just before we left. Uh, and that's when I started thinking about the oxygen supply, because today normally, as, as I said, we run them on, on uh, generator power. It consumes a lot of diesel. Today in Shawana, it's done with solar power, but one small concentrator required 10 <coughs> big solar panels and 12 of these 12 volt uh, relatively big and heavy batteries to be operational for 24 hours always. That's, hmm, expensive. And the problem is that you have to replace the batteries with a certain interval, maybe two to three years, which would cost still a thousand euros per year to do. So it's still very difficult. It, it works, but it's still very difficult. So the, the idea was that instead, uh, if we can pr could produce more during daytime and then store it as compressed gas for nice nighttime use. And what the project wanted to find was the question mark in there. Uh, what was the unit uh, that could do this? Local production and, and compressed storage of oxygen. Uh, and we knew that there were uh, things for it. I had found on the web, uh, but it turned out to be very, very difficult to get it. Uh, they are very expensive equipment because they are a small series. Uh, the, the ones we knew uh, could not even be delivered in time for this short six-month project because they are very, very small, serious equipment and, and also very expensive. So the solution that we came up with for testing uh, was a lower pressure storage, i.e. more bulky storage, uh, but easier to, uh, to achieve. Uh, so this is the test phase of, of the project. Okay, 
there's a P disappearing. Never mind. Uh, the, uh, it says set up at EBC, which the, is the Espace Bruno Corbe in, in Brussels, a test center. Uh, the, the power solution is normal solar panels, uh, but slightly differently uh, uh, set up than you're used to. We uh, wanted to get as many hours of production as possible out of it, so we oriented half to the morning sun in the east and half to the evening sun in the west to get a little bit more time for production. Solar panels themselves are, are relatively inexpensive today, so you can sort of overdimension that a bit. And then the, the uh, uh, production and, and storage solution. Uh, delivered by uh, a, a fantastically innovative and uh, a nice little UK company called Diamedica. Uh, they already had uh, a storage solution, not packaged like this, but uh, the tanks, the compressor. Uh, they had been looking a little bit into solar power, which no other manufacturer in the world, I would say, had done. Uh, so they put this together as a prototype, sent it to Brussels, and we could test it and, and verify that it would actually work. Uh, testing in Brussels has its problems. Uh, there is sometimes sunshine, as you see on the picture, uh, but most of the time not. Um, but uh, we could still verify that this with some adjustments would work. So after the tests, doing calculations on this, uh, I put together this table of, of in a way, conclusions. Uh, starting at the bottom with the standard solution today, you see that running on generator, not counting the generator cost, because we would have that anyway probably, is a very low investment, but a very high running cost. Then going to the Shimana solution, slightly higher investment, but a lower running cost. Then the uh, high pressure storage solutions that exist, but are never run on solar power, uh, that are much more expensive, very low running costs, uh, but we couldn't get to test them. Uh, and then at the top, you see the, the low pressure storage solution that we actually tested. And calculating over three years of operation to compare these different solutions, you see that we actually end up at around the same total cost uh, for 10 liters per, per minute continuously, 25, uh, 24 uh, hours per day. Uh, same order for the standard now, the, the one on batteries, so it's, it's not a bad solution, but it will keep costing a little bit, uh, and for the low pressure system. So the final recommendations from the project was that uh, to keep developing this, because you need a, a pipe distribution system for the oxygen to the patients, which is interesting anyway, uh, not to have the concentrators all around the wards, partner with this supplier, uh, to solve some, some remaining issues, perform a field test which could probably even be sharp, i.e. delivering to patients. Uh, and in combination with that, also hopefully test a high pressure solution. Uh, it stopped there because it wasn't mature really in, in, uh, uh, in the organization to take it further and the company's maybe not really mature. I'm still hoping it will uh, go to, to further development and, uh, and use in, uh, in MSF. Uh, but in a way, that's, that illustrates that innovation processes are not just a linear process where you will go along and you can plan that we will do this in six months or a year. So, so now it's, it's, uh, it's on hold. Uh, but to really show you something that has been successful, I will try to, if I have time for a two minute video, Thank you. Uh, introduce you to, uh, to uh, the doctor in Shawana. This is the Dr. Daddy. Um, he's still there. Uh, I didn't realize really when I was working with this that this was an innovation project in itself. But we only have, we have less than a handful of running facilities on solar power. And this was the first one ever done for a handover in MSF. So please meet Dr. Daddy. Moi, c'est Dr. Dadi Mbamba Mboua, c'est médecin directeur du Centre de Santé de Référence de Chamon. 
C'est un hôpital qui avait été construit et aussi équipé par le médecin sans frontières Hollande. Depuis 2006, qu'ils avaient travaillé ici et ils sont partis en 2016 vers le mois de août. Et cet hôpital est resté entre les mains du gouvernement congolais. C'est maintenant une structure de l'État et sous le fonctionnement de, du gouvernement congolais, comme toutes les structures de sanitaires euh, sont, sont faites. Nous allons commencer par les, les soins intensifs. Voilà, nous sommes ici au niveau des, des soins intensifs. Et avec cet enfant qui est euh, sous oxygène, notre concentrateur d'oxygène marche bien et il a encore subi des entretiens avec l'arrivée de Père Eric ici qui a vu que l'appareil est toujours bien conservé et il est bien entretenu aussi. Et ça sert pour la prise en charge des enfants qui viennent avec un problème de, 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 de respiration ou encore qui n'ont qui pas beaucoup de, de saturation d'oxygène. Voilà, ça c'est notre chambre du système solaire. Voilà, nous sommes là. Dans des meilleures conditions, ils ont la lumière toute la nuit, ils ont euh, l'oxygène, on peut opérer quand on veut, puisqu'on a la lumière régulièrement, et tout cela marche parfaitement bien. Et ce n'est pas comme les, les hôpitaux euh, normaux à Congo Non, il y a beaucoup d'hôpitaux au Congo où on opère avec des lampes torches. Vous opérez dans des lampes avec des lampes torches, il n'y a même pas ceci, il n'y a pas de concentrateur d'oxygène. Mais les médecins sans frontières, avec ces donateurs, voilà ce que vous avez fait. Chamona, c'est un hôpital qui dépasse de très loin beaucoup d'hôpitaux de notre pays ici. Thank you. Uh, so I'm actually still the, the tech log in Chamwana, uh, very remotely and, and, and privately. Uh, so these are the special thanks. Some of these people are actually here today, so, but I didn't write the names. Uh, thank you so much.